learn how to make a forecast temperature map from the GFS using MetPy's declarative plotting syntax. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to show you how to use some of the tools in Siphon and some X-Ray Magic, as well as MetPy's declarative plotting interface, to make a map of a forecast temperature from the GFS with really not that many lines of code. So to save some typing in the video here, I've gone ahead and put the URL of the data up. This is the current best collection of the quarter degree GFS that's up on threads.ucar.edu. If you don't know about thread servers, we've talked about those in some of our past videos focusing on Siphon and how you can determine these URLs. And then we need to go ahead and do all of our imports. There are quite a few here. So from date time, I'm going to import the date time object as well as time delta. I'm going to import the IO module. From metpy.units, we're going to import units. So we have our unit uh, tools available to us. Then from metpy.plots, we're going to import image plot, map panel, and panel container. We've talked about these before in the declarative plotting introduction videos. And then we're going to import the threads data server catalog. We'll also import X-Ray as XR. And of course, don't forget our matplotlib inline magic. So now let's go ahead and create an instance of the TDS catalog object that points to that data URL we're going to get the best GFS. And if we print out the best GFS data sets. We need to actually wrap that in a call to list so we get a list of those printed out, uh, a useful representation. We see there are one items in here, which is best GFS quarter degree forecast time series. So now we're going to get the best data set. So the best data set is best gfs.datasets and the zeroth and in this case only element. Then we're going to create a netcdf subset service or ncss object here on our best dataset by calling dot subset. So what this is going to allow us to do is build a query to only get the data that we really want and have to transfer less data across the internet and not have other data that we're plotting that we're just going to cut out anyway. So now we need to create a query object, ncss.query. And then on that query, I'm going to impose a lon lat box. My north is going to be 50, south of 25, east of minus 60 and a west of minus 130. So this will cover pretty much all of CONUS. This lets you change the region and look around CONUS without having to go download more data for that specific region. You could of course make this a lot smaller if you wanted. I'm going to chain that with dot time and using date times UTC now function which will give us the current time, I'm going to add a time delta of 100 hours. So I want to get a forecast 100 hours from now. Next, I need to tell the query what kind of object I will accept back. Do I want CSV? That would be quite large. In this case, I want net CDF4 back. And we need to specify what variables. In this case, I just want the temperature underscore surface variable. You can specify multiple things here, but there's no need in bringing all of that back if we don't need to. 
So there it shows us what it's built in terms of our query string. And now we can actually go ahead and go get the data. So the data is ncss.getData, and I want it in raw format, or just give me the bytes that come back from the server from our query. So until we run this line, we have not brought any data back from the thread server. We've just created a query saying what we want to bring back. So I run that cell and we brought that data back. It's only one variable uh, for a time or the nearest to a time that we could get and only over the conus. So it's not all that much data. So now I'm going to create GFS, which is going to be our X array uh, data array. So xr.open dataset. And we need to give it a file-like thing that is our netcdf data. So from the IO module, I'm going to use bytes IO, which makes a bunch of bytes appear like a, a file-like object, and give that my data. So if we look at GFS, it's an X-ray data set. It's got a, a reference time, a time, lat, lon, and so on, all the things, our temperature at the surface, everything that we requested in here. And uh, we also have attributes that are automatically populated for us by the thread server when we make that subset request. So now we're ready to do a plot. I want to make a shaded plot or an image plot. So we do that using the image plot object from MetPy's declarative plotting interface. I'm going to call it IMG and create an instance. And I'm going to set the data to be GFS. And I'm going to set the field that I want to plot because we could have more than one variable. We just requested one in this case. But I want to say that I'm going to plot temperature surface. And I'm going to set the color map. The default's Virtus, which isn't bad. But for temperatures, to me, a color map like plasma makes sense. If you want to know more about color maps, go back a couple weeks and watch our MetPy Mondays on selecting a color map, which can be very important for your data. So now we need to create our map panel or subplot if you think in matplotlib terms, which is an instance of MetPy's map panel object. I'm going to set the area. Uh, you can specify things like US or you can specify a state. So I'm going to specify the state of Arkansas. We can set what layers we would like. In this case, I don't need oceans or anything like that. I'm just going to put states uh, for the state borders. Plotting land or rivers or things like that just doesn't make sense when we've got this shaded temperature map that we're going to put on top anyway. We can set the title, and this should be something descriptive, like GFS temperature forecast 100 hours. And then we specify what plots are going to be in this panel. So we could have an image plot and contours on top of that. But in this case, it's just one plot, and it, we called it IMG. Lastly, we need to create a panel container, which you can think of like a, a figure. It can have multiple map panels in it. So we do that with the panel container object. We can set the size, which is like setting fig size. So I'm going to set it to 10 by 8. And remember, this is going to be in whatever units your matplotlib RC file has, inches by default. We set the panels, just like we set plots in a panel. We're going to set panels in a panel container. So it's going to have that one panel object in it. And we call pc.show. If this is your first time using Matplotlib's uh, integration with Cartopy, you might download some files and see some warnings about that. That's OK. It's just downloading state outlines and so on. And you're also going to see this warning about the Matplotlib backend, but that's OK. It's just because we're in a notebook environment. So here we go. We've got our plasma color map, our title. And we are centered on the state of Arkansas. We can see there's an interesting uh, front feature out here that's about 100 hours out. So with just a few lines, we've queried for the best GFS forecast that's available for 100 hours from now. We've got the temperature data for that forecast and created a map, all with about five minutes of Python. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.